Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. Today I'm going to work on a school assignment. I'm sure all of you are aware... Oh look, you can see my arm in the mirror. All of you are aware of the way universities have moved all of their classes to online or uh, what they're calling remote formats. And of course, that includes any studio classes, such as my printmaking class. Um, on Monday, we got the assignment to... Uh, we actually got a choice of, of several different things, but I like the idea of using the lino cut, um, the linoleum uh, plate that we were working on when classes got moved online. And... Um, because I had been especially disappointed because I worked hard on this and to not be able to print it, you know, was disappointing. So, I can try to print it and we're going to see how it works. Um, I also thought that I could explain, and this could be a sort of tutorial video, of course, it's an experiment for me, I've never done it before, but I'll tell you what I'm doing and what I've done, and then that way if you want to try it at home, this is all stuff that you can just order on Amazon or whatever. It's nothing special. So, um, for this, what you start with is a linoleum plate or block, or there are several different ways you could call it, but it's like a sheet of linoleum. And you use a linoleum cutter, which is this tool. And I'm not going to cut any today, but it comes with these little tips that go into this part and then you can cut this material. So I just had this here to show you how I cut it. And if you are going to cut um, a couple of things, one, you can, it's going to sound weird, but you can sit on your linoleum to warm it up because that will make it really easy to cut. Otherwise, you can slip a lot or it will be really hard to cut. And then another thing is when you're cutting, be extra careful because those, the blades in here are sharp. They're actual blades, so you can cut yourself. Luckily, I didn't cut myself, <laughs> but there were some close calls, so be really careful. The advice I heard was to always hold um, your plate with one hand at the bottom like this and have your other hand on top so that there's no way you could possibly slip and get yourself. Um, it is kind of frustrating way to cut though so I didn't really do that I just tried to be careful to not hold it like this but even sometimes I'd be like down here and I'd hold it like this it's up to your discretion but don't blame me because it's sharp if you don't if you don't do the the specifically safe way <laughs> it's not my fault so I um, cut this several weeks ago now and what it is is a werewolf and we were doing a prompt a prompt as a class I can't remember what it was I think it was nature or something like that it was just the word nature and you could interpret it however you wanted the only um, caveat was that you had to it had to have a little more meaning it couldn't just be um, draw a flower and you're done or whatever it had to have a little bit of deeper meaning. So with mine, I did a werewolf, and the idea is, you know, the nature of humans versus wolves, why we always villainize wolves, even though wolves are actually very similar to humans at, from a naturalistic point of view. You know, they live in family units. They hunt together. They're omnivores. They hunt in the daytime, all this stuff. And then so the werewolf is a representative of all the ways that we're the same and that because we're the same the werewolf is a feared thing so yeah it's it's something to think about not an not a message that I'm trying to push on people just something to consider something to get you thinking and I felt like that was the point of um, what we were supposed to be doing with this just m make it an image that makes people think so this is the moon and here's like a, I love when they have those uh, it's it usually happens on cold like icy nights but it's sort of clear just a little bit 
like foggy cloudy and then you get this halo around the moon that's what this is supposed to be and then of course the werewolf's like howling to the moon I carved in these little spots that'll hopefully show up as stars and so when you're carving another thing to keep in mind is for little small cuts like these they will show up as white or they will be so I'm gonna be printing in black ink and I'm gonna be printing on white paper so everywhere that's cut is gonna show up as white the only places where it might not is like right here where some ink might get on here which is fine because it would end up looking like texture for the moon but you've got to um, keep in mind that it will be the opposite of what you put down but you'll, if that doesn't make sense, then you'll see it once I actually do it. So I think that explains where I'm at now. I had been thinking maybe I would want to carve a little bit more texture into the body here, but I've got other assignments to do, and so I feel like I should just print it and see what comes out. So the next, for the next steps, the tools I've got, for one, I've got paper down here, because what I'm using is oil-based ink, and it can... I don't want it to get on my table and stuff. You can clean it, of course, but I don't want to have to deal with that. So I put some, like, low-quality, like, drawing and watercolor paper that I didn't care about just getting ink on. And then this is actually a mirror from my, from a previous, uh, what was it? It was a painting class, my first painting class, and we had to have a mirror to do our self-portrait, but what this is going to work for me is to put my ink on because when we were in the studio still for um, printmaking we would always spread the ink out on these big glass it was almost just like this it just wasn't a mirror it was just a big slab of glass and that way it doesn't absorb the ink and it's easier to clean up um, the other thing so here's the ink I'm using this oil based block printing ink by Speedball. Speedball is pretty much the printmaking company. I think everything that we're, we've used is got, maybe not this linoleum, but yeah, so this is oil-based. Because it's oil-based, you also need some gloves. You can use, ah, Sarah, welcome! You can use these like kitchen gloves, or you can use those more like doctor gloves, but the point is to protect yourself from the ink because it can be not it's not like you're gonna get a horrible rash or anything but if you're gonna be doing a lot of print making then and using oil ink then you should use these gloves so I've got these gloves to wear once I start putting it down the next thing is this is called a brayer and you use it to spread out the ink like this and then you roll the ink onto the block that's what this is for and then this is super handy this is a good design they've got this right here so you can set it like this and it doesn't make your space messy um, we're allowed to normally we use printmaking paper and it's very thick printmaking paper is very thick and we usually soak it in water for 15 minutes first but then that's all with the print printing press in mind which is this big huge metal cylinder and this plate underneath and you adjust it to be the correct height to smush it as you pull this big thing that looks like a ship's wheel you know and we don't have that so we were allowed to use whatever paper we want I've been using this paper which is um, Japanese calligraphy paper the reason why I'm using it, well, for one, I haven't used it for very much stuff, and I've had it forever. But for two, it's very thin, and I feel like that's more, that will work better for these at-home printmaking projects where, uh, I don't know. With the with the thick paper, it seems like it's fine when you're putting it through the huge press. But this, I'm using a rolling pin, so <laughs> I feel like a thinner paper is going to be more successful. So if you do use this paper, and I don't know how it's going to turn out because this is my first time trying this at-home technique, 
make sure that you print on the like textured side because there's a smooth side and it's kind of shiny. I think you guys can see that. If you print on this side, it's not really going to absorb into the paper and so it won't really dry, it'll smudge right away and so make sure you're using this side. And then finally, oh well not finally, okay, you definitely want to have some sort of like paper towels or something because it could get really messy. So what we've been using in class are these uh, blue shop towels. The reason why we use these is because they have less lint than regular paper towels. But um, I think pretty much anything will work as long as you don't mind throwing it away. <laughs> you can see the shine. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So you'll know what, if you, if you try this, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now the last thing. Boop, rolling pin. This is not actually what we were instructed to use, but it feels like what the point of this class has become is to just do stuff. Experiment, try things, keep creating. Um, because it's so hard for these classes where their studio art classes the point is you can't really do this kind of work outside of a studio and yes I have a home studio but I don't have a printmaking press I don't have like a dark room for my photography class or whatever so I figure it'll be alright if I use this because this is the closest thing this is like a teeny tiny miniature version of the printing presses that we were working on so that's what I'm using, and that's the last thing. So, I'm finally going to get started. So I put my gloves on. I'm also wearing, you probably can't see, but I'm also wearing a, uh, ooh, a, uh, apron to protect my clothes. And it is a good thing because I did get a stain on this apron like on the first day <laughs> like well good thing I got it cuz that would have been on my clothes and I don't keep clothes that I don't like so <laughs> I would have ruined something that I like okay so I got my gloves on so I'm getting the ink what I've already done um, before I even started streaming but I'll do it again just to show you I like to squish these inks because I have found in my very limited experience from this semester only that they can become separated, the medium from the pigment. And so it doesn't always work, but it helps if you squish them around. Even when they're brand new, they can be separated. So I squish it to try and mix it before I squeeze any out onto my uh, workspace. Those gloves look difficult to work while you're wearing. Yeah, they're... I'd rather be safe than sorry, but they're not... Um, they are a little bit cumbersome. <laughs> but that's why if you can get like the doctor gloves, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they make those like doctor gloves and they go up higher, then those will probably be better because you can uh, move your f fingers more freely because they're more form-fitting. But this is better than nothing. So you can see my name is on it because I was using these in class, so I didn't want people to think they were someone else's and pick them up. Okay, this is also a pain to open. These are actually my sister's inks who took this class years and years ago. <laughs> she saw, she got the same degree that I am currently working on. Okay, I'm making sure there's not like, I saw little fibers. Something with this linoleum is that these little fibers come out of the back. I'm gonna be kind of careful, so I don't want, want those on there. So I'm not going to put too much ink to start with because... It'll be a waste if I don't actually need it. So I just put this little tiny... Uh, I don't know how well you can see that. Oh well. Put that tiny blop on this non-porous surface. That's what I think is most important. Any surface will work, I think, as long as it's non-porous. Then take the brayer and start rolling it out into a sort of rectangle shape. And what's really important is not to go back and forth and back and forth it's to keep lifting it and moving it so that it will get evenly spread out and get on all sides of the brayer evenly and 
and so just keep doing this switching back and forth lifting continuing to lift it and this might yeah there's no way you're gonna see this but there's a texture you're gonna be looking for to know when it's rolled out well um, make sure that it's not too lumpy try to get it looking as smooth as possible so it's like super fine maybe like sand texture or even finer than that because if it's still this super lumpy um, I think my professor called it like orange skin type of lumps then or citrus skin I guess um, then it's not rolled out well enough it needs to be smoother so I think this is good so and it's evenly covering my brayer so now I'm just going to start rolling it out onto the plate see and that is why I put paper down <laughs> because I cannot help doing that I always do it even when I try not to so I'm like I'm just going to accept how I am <laughs> and so when you're rolling this on you want to be the same as you were when you were rolling it out keep lifting it keep rolling in different angles so that you can get it really evenly covered and then you can go back over here and get some more ink onto your brayer until you can cover it all evenly you can already sort of see how it's going to show up because it's going to be just like this only reversed when I put it on the paper well it might not be just like this because who knows how uh, how it's going to work to roll it out with a uh, rolling pin but if this works it would be awesome because I actually have another piece of linoleum so I could use that for something at some point or if this works and I like the results I could use it for illustration projects too so I know some illustrators use printmaking to create their illustrations I'm going to keep going because what I found when I did my test print I was actually able to do that in class um, I didn't put enough ink on the first time actually didn't put enough ink on like the first three times <laughs> so and since this is just hand printed so the ink probably won't get squished on there as good I'm gonna whoa went flying I'm going to I'm gonna put some more ink down ah I don't really like the oil inks though they always not hurt my eyes but irritate my eyes just a bit just a bit enough to be annoying not enough to be worried but there are non toxic like safe inks so if I continue making prints beyond this class I think I will only get those kind of inks and not oil see this is why these towels are good so I could there was a little bit of ink here so I could wipe it off so I don't accidentally get it somewhere okay so spreading this little blob out printmaking is really fun so it can be really tough sometimes to roll out the ink properly because <laughs> you're like oh, I just want to print I just want to put the paper on and see what happens but if you want a or at least in my opinion a good looking print rolling the ink out properly is really important and that was actually a grading it was a part of our grade before before we had to go online was the ink application so in the world of printmaking it is important so that's good let's add 
I'm trying on purpose to get a little bit onto this moon right here because I want to get that if I can. I don't know if I can. But I want to get some of that to um, be like the texture of the moon itself. Something that you can use, I'm not sure if you guys can see it on the camera, but it's, I find it's actually pretty easy to see if you have enough ink or not, or if it's smoothly applied, because you can sometimes see the line where the edge of the brayer was, and if you can still see that line, then that means that it needs to be more smoothly applied, or it needs to be, um, that more ink needs to be applied. <laughs> you can always show the instructor the stream and they'll see you're applying it properly. Yeah, actually I was thinking that uh, maybe I should send her a recording of the stream in case she's interested in seeing it. She's already said though that as long as we're participating, we're going to get really good grades. So <laughs> she was like, don't worry, as long as you show up every day, you're going to do great. I'm like, yay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I think this is looking really good. I'm not seeing any areas that look like they are a slightly different shade of black. And I'm not seeing any, um, like, leftover lines from the edge of the brayer. Okay. So I'm going to call that good. I mean, who knows? Maybe I will want to put on a ton of extra ink and do a second print because it's not that it's not as uh, as dark doesn't turn out as dark as I want but who knows how it's gonna work so with printmaking the uh, general um, desired format is to have the print be evenly spaced on three sides with the top being up here and leaving the most space at the bottom. Oh, you can't see that. Leaving any extra amount of space. So up here it's all even, but down here it's just a bigger space, however much the plate leaves. Because down here you would sign it, um, and so that makes it heavier down here. So having that extra space helps balance the whole thing, actually. Um, I'm sure she's not worried about that, because <laughs> actually one of the options for this was put it, put this, ink it, put your paper, and put a piece of plywood and run it over with your car. <laughs> so I don't think she's that worried about um, how even it is. But I do think it would be nice if I could get it somewhat close to that, that format. Another thing that's nice about this paper is you can actually see through it. So you can sort of do that. You can sort of line it up. Okay. I think that's good enough. I'm going to, actually I'm gonna, uh, okay. I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this first. Because otherwise my hand is definitely gonna go in this ink. There. And I can take these gloves off. Here we go. I'm just going to start in the middle. I mean, there's no precedent for this, so I'm not sure. I'm learning as I go. Let's do it. And hopefully what will happen is that the paper will stick to the ink so that it won't move. So I'm going to roll it really good like this first without going to the edges. And then I will do the edges. So hopefully this will make it stick. And I can lift up and do the edges like this without having the paper move. We'll see. Oh, 
it's moving. Eek. Okay, I'm going to pick it up. It started moving. It started lifting right here. Let's just see what happened. Huh. Yeah, you can see right where it started moving right here. Mm. That's not bad though. It's like I need to just push harder on it. None of the moon came through, but that's okay because one of the options for Printing this was actually used the back of a spoon, and so if I did that, I could actually get the moon in there more. Sweet. Okay, print number one is done. There's no amount of prints that I need to do, but if I'm going to do this, I'm going to figure out how to make it work for me. So, I'm going to re-ink this. There is still quite a bit of inks uh, left on it. I think you can see that with this highlight right here, that's because of the ink. But it won't be even if I don't reapply it. Let's see, where can I put this stuff? <laughs> okay, move these prints over here. It goes there. I'm gonna need my ink plate. Who knew that this mirror would come in handy for printmaking years and years later? still enough ink right here to at least do one coat. Maybe I'll do some more. Maybe that would help too if I really overloaded this plate with ink. Yeah, I think I'm going to try that. This time I'm going to put a ton of ink on here. That's actually a mistake I made during my test prints. I mean, it wasn't a mistake like, I can't believe you did that, but you know, you have to make mistakes to learn. So that was one thing that I learned from and I put too much ink, but actually might be a good idea for this version. Maybe I should have taped my papers down. Yeah, maybe uh, once I put this ink on, I'm going to get some tape real quick and so just artist tape and tape it down to my table so it doesn't move so much. Woo! That's, yeah, that's a lot of ink. It's juicy. Can you hear that? Hey, you can see me. Hi! Yeah, it's so much ink that it's kind of staying in that citrus skin texture. But I'm going to go with it and see what happens. Remembering to lift as you roll. like the films, the films, the fumes, the films, <laughs> the fumes from the oil ink. Oh yeah, this is way more, this is way juicier than it was before. like it looks shinier in the camera this uh reflecting part right there I feel like even in the camera you can tell how much more ink is on it ah almost missed the paper no I'm gonna do one more layer I'm gonna make it super juicy probably this will be more ink than you would ever want to put on 
you'd ever want to put on if you were using a regular press, but these are the days of experimentation at home. Okay. Roll out the ink. Roll out the ink. Lifting and rolling. What are you doing? Oh, okay. <sighs> Just figured something out on my computer. Yay! I was wondering why it wasn't showing me how many watchers I have. When everyone else was like, well, it shows you right here in the corner. I'm like, it's not showing for me. Then I realized, oh, I have an ad blocker. Maybe the ad blocker is just reading that as an ad. Indeed, it was. Ad blocker is awesome, but sometimes it blocks things that are not in any way advertisements. Something about the underlying code triggers it. get the corners extra good they've been a little bit tough to feels like they're tough to reach because this play is kind of curved okay it is super juicy ah no that's okay so I'm gonna move this this and I'm gonna get some tape to take this paper down real quick guess I don't need that much jeez This one, it's two corners. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> there's so much stuff. I don't know where to put it. <laughs> there. Okay. So I don't need the need my paper. There's my so-called Japanese calligraphy paper. I'm just gonna do my best to line it up evenly. Oh yeah, I can already feel the paper adhering to this just because I set it down. So this is definitely, I just must not have had enough ink on last time. Let's see how it goes. I, I'm going to stand up so I can put it. Oh, look at that. That's way more. You can tell. That's way more effective. You can just see the ink through through the paper. Exciting! This is exciting! I'm trying to put a lot of weight on it. Oops, this is in the way. Standing up. Let's 
you do want, if you can, to get it even. Whoa. Whoa, that was a little rough. <laughs> well, the tape came up. I'm rolling it so hard. I'm so excited about it. Rawr. Okay, I'll try to be a little more gentle. <laughs> Professor said to use a back of a spoon, but maybe I can just use this. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'll just use this to get this texture for the moon. Okay. I have, a good, I have a good feeling about this. Oh, I have a great feeling about this. Yeah. Yeah, my problem was before I was way too conservative with the ink. Look at it. It looks awesome. Wow. And even though there's this little stuff right here where the ink didn't come up, who knows why exactly it is. It actually just, it looks like a nice, you know, part of the night sky or texture for the werewolf's uh, fur. Looks awesome. Let's do another one. This, oh, here, let's look at the difference. Version one, <laughs> nearly, not nearly enough ink. Version 2, you can pretty much see every line that I carved in. Even these teeny tiny little hairs on the shoulders that I... Can you see that? That I carved in to show that the light is shining onto the werewolf. The light is shining on from the moon. Ah, oh, awesome. I guess I gotta tape these down better though. tape folded in on itself. Okay, let me fix my workstation a little bit. I'm trying not to touch the ink. This didn't stick at all. This tape didn't stick at all up here. What the heck? Need more tape. Sarah Quilt. Nice. Thank you. If nothing else, I can take pictures and show the various different versions that I've created. tape multiple sides so that it does not don't come up stay stay stuck and I'll tape this paper onto this paper and onto the desk yes and it's really warm today here where I live. <laughs> My studio room is in the basement, but it's quite warm in here. This basement's usually cool and hmm. it's nice for my running though. I'm gonna go running. It, it's so annoying to have to put on a bunch of layers to go running. When it's warm, I have to put on way less stuff. Yeah, this is just coming right up. This tape does not want to stick to my desk in general, I think. Whatever. That's probably at least better than nothing. Okay. I already have a bunch of ink down, but based on the last print, I think I need to put a, another big blop, even though I already have so much down. Oh. 
cover this up so that I don't accidentally get it on the desk. huge blob. This will be, I'll make this the most ink that I've put on the plate so far. We'll see how that works. <laughs> Super goopy. I think I'd never want to do this much if I was in the regular printmaking studio. <laughs> would be way too much. Like this isn't even getting to, uh, it's not even reaching the point of citrus texture, it's just it's like stringy lines of <laughs> comes out citrus texture. probably do this technique with any paper you'd want, but I think that it would be greatly affected. Um, the ink would be, the necessary ink application would be greatly affected by which paper you choose to use. But if you go into it with the, uh, with the mindset of just experimenting and having fun and seeing what you can create in that moment anyway, then uh, you'll be fine. I'm not sure how I'm going to clean this plate. <laughs> Normally we run it through the press a few times to get the extra ink off and maybe I'll just uh, roll some scrap paper on it until it's clean enough. Now we're getting to the, we're getting closer to the type of texture you would want if you were printing in a press for the ink right here. Which is good because it means the ink is going down on here, which is what I want. I'm gonna get as much as I can onto the plate. Lift and roll, lift and roll. All right. I think I've inked it more than I did the last time. Okay. Well, at least the tape's working now. It's not uh, 
when I move this mirror, it's not bringing the paper with it. So tape is working for that. Okay, move that over there. Don't need my gloves on for this as long as I'm careful not to touch the ink. I need a new sheet of paper. New sheet of calligraphy paper. Shiny side up. And do my best to yet yeah, yeah it, it, it adheres just immediately. You can hardly work on centering because it just but that's good because that means there's enough ink on there to make a cool picture. Yep, yeah, whoa. There's so much ink that it's already made part of the image. Okay. Let's roll it out. Sorry if that's shaking the camera too much. Can't be helped. I'm trying to put a fair amount of pressure on. Tin. That's what that noise is. <laughs> this takes way longer than putting it through a big press. <laughs> thing that's nice about using this paper is that since you can see through it you can kind of see areas where you might need to put a little more work. If you used a thicker paper then you just would have to hope. <laughs> Making is hungry work. Okay, and get the moon texture with this, with the end of the carving tool. I carved this on purpose, thinking that it would become texture, that it had the potential to become texture. So it's cool that I can make a version like this without this texture if I want because it's not getting any at all this is not pushing it in at all and I think that's thanks to the fact that it's only my own strength rather than this you know heavy huge heavy two metal things like ah like you would smash your hand into a cartoon flat hand if you put your hand in it or whatever because with that it actually pushes the paper into these grooves like because it's that much pressure so I don't know if I would be able to get a clean moon if I wanted it I think this one is even better the application is even better I did get ink on the bottom from the paper down there but that's okay because I'm not gonna like be selling these or whatever or if I wanted to make one where I was gonna sell it then I would make sure to put a protective paper down there I think this is even better Ugh, see if I can hold them both 
Here's this one. It's even better than this one. Because this one, you could see, like in this top corner right here, you can see texture from the linoleum plate itself. Like that's just texture from the linoleum. And the ink didn't get in here well enough. But here, that's not there. There's just a few areas, like right here. Or right here. This is the teeniest, tiniest bit of... Compared to here, where... Ah! Don't fall. Right here, there's tons of texture for where ink didn't get in there enough or didn't get onto the paper enough. And so comparing this one to the first one... A huge stark difference. Just doesn't even, hardly even looks like the same process. <laughs> and these are the coolest. These are so cool. This is so fun. I'm so glad that there are ways to make printmaking doable at home. Because I was kind of despairing at first when all my classes went online and I'm like, it's not going to be possible to get anything out of these classes. Well, turns out that I was wrong. Like, this is stuff I can continue to use at home and I don't have to get any more equipment than what I already have. Quilt. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, I think so. My professor is incredible. She was able to, like, totally... She's come up with so many projects that we could do at home. It's so great. Okay. I think I will do one more just to um, get one that's the nicest I can possibly get it. So I'm going to really load it up with ink. And then when I'm ready to print, I'm going to put down some protective paper all around so that none of this will get onto the paper that I'm printing onto. Move this over. Printmaking is so messy. It's really fun, but it's... I've never been a fan of really messy art media. <laughs> And so I like colored pencils, markers, watercolor paint, I like things that I can keep neat and not accidentally get stuff places and it will never come off again. I'm just going to apply, apply what I've already got rolled out and then I'll roll out some more. What do you think? Should I, uh, ah. should I do the textured moon for this final one, or should I do a clean moon? Clean white moon. I don't have an example of the clean moon, but so far I've been on purpose making sure to get that texture inside of the circle that represents the moon. put so much ink that it's actually starting to get into the lines. No, I just got some on my rolling pin. There. Clean that right up. That's why you should always have some sort of paper towel or something available. Have it at the ready. how I can clean this plate at home. I have no idea. You can't like rinse it. You can't put it under water. Okay. 
Let's put some more. You know what? I just remembered that my professor did say something about needing to sort of warm up the the plate if it's the first time you've ever printed on it. So maybe that's another reason why my very first print just did not really work at all. It's because I'd never printed on this plate before. like the moon with no texture. was a way to make sure that my plate would lie flat. Since it's a little bit, it goes like up, like a little bridge. Sometimes I can tell my swipe of the ink is not going on quite how I would like it to. So you can see in the reflection, well I don't know if you can see, but I can see with each swipe of the brayer I can see where the ink is going. reflects the lights. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's make it as inked as possible. Whew. I'm glad this is going to be my last one. As my hands are starting to get tired from doing this. tons of ink right here. I'm not sure at which point the plate just won't take any more ink. I'm not experienced enough to be able to tell either like whether it's whether I'm just like doing nothing because it doesn't really change anything anymore or if it'll just keep taking it and taking it and taking it. I'm not sure. One more, just in case. I'm going to try to make this the, my best print of the lot. After my, however long I've been, how long have I been streaming? Oh wow, almost exactly an hour. A few seconds to exactly an hour. My hour of experimentation. Well, some of it was just explaining how to do this, but still. Be good to come out with the best result after practicing so much.
Okay. That is as much as I'm going to ink for this final print. this low quality drawing paper to put underneath. I can just like slide this under here. Oh, do I have like a? Mm, maybe I'll use this. It worked. <laughs> this bone thing. What is it called? Bone folder something. I can't remember what it's called. I just got it. I've always wanted one. And this is why, because it has so many different uses in the studio. Dang it, I got a little bit right here. I need another piece of paper. I don't want it to get messed up. I want it to be nice and clean, this final one. Is this big enough? It is. Use this little low quality watercolor paper. Just want to cover it up and make it safe. Come on. There. Perfect. Perfect. I can probably do that. Okay. Bone folder. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Bone folder. It's called that because it's made out of bones. Made out of a bone. Okay. This is probably... One big swipe from top to bottom. To get it all stuck onto the ink, get all the paper stuck onto the ink. I see that linoleum texture in this corner. I don't know if I put enough ink down. I guess we'll find out. Either way, this is going to be the last one. Got to work on my photography assignment after this, so I can't spend all day on it, no matter how much fun it is. And I always got to leave time for cleanup, too. I guess I could explain in case anybody wants to try this. Um, I'm not sure what to do with the plate yet. I'm going to have to figure that out myself. You could just store it between two pieces of paper for now. And then maybe later I figure out what I'm... I think that's what I'm going to do is just put it between two sheets of paper so that it doesn't get... Or you could get a big piece and fold it and put it inside like a taco. Just so that it doesn't get the ink on anything. You can probably also take scrap sheets of paper and just keep rolling and rolling and rolling until they start coming off clean. Because that's basically what we do in the studio with the big printing presses, is roll the plate through with um, newsprint or something to get that 
remaining ink off. So you can't really, you could, I bet you could tape some of these and wipe it, but you would not want to use any sort of like cleaning agent or anything. Don't spray it with any liquid or nothing like that. Just wipe it with something dry or press. You could probably take this and press it with this. <laughs> And then for the non-porous surface with your ink on it, if it's possible to get it into a sink and not, because like I'm not going to put this mirror in the sink because I'm not sure if the back is water safe, the back of the mirror. But if it's something like a, just a sheet of glass or something, and you can just get it in your sink, then just put like dish soap and you know, use your hands with the water and just keep putting more and more dish soap to break up that oil. And I would rinse, let the water run for a long time to really break that up so it doesn't clog up your pipes. I don't know if that would happen. <laughs> this is all a big experiment for me, but that's what I do when I put any sort of greasy stuff down the drain. Just run the hot water for a while to make sure it clears it all out of there. Then what else? All the brayer, you can do the same thing. Put it in the water, hot water with Dawn dish soap and just really wash it good. Make sure you get the edges and anywhere, all the little nooks and crannies because that ink can really hide, hide in places and then it'll show up on your next print when you don't want it to. It'll be the wrong color or make a weird line right through your print or something. What else? I think that's it for cleanup. And then like this paper, just throw it away. These scrap papers can just be thrown away. I think that's it. Make sure you wash your hands so that you don't accidentally eat some of the oil ink later or something. Sure, there's tutorials online too. I'm just spouting off what I learned from class. <laughs> so there are people, there are professional printmakers out there who make great videos and stuff. My professor actually has made some. We watched some to learn how to do the last print technique that I did last week, which I might do on a live stream in the future because it's actually even better than this because. Well, no, it's so different, but as far as safety is concerned, it's much better because it uses non-toxic, non-toxic inks, which I really like. I always get non-toxic watercolors and stuff. I just realized I'm way close to the camera, so apologies if I'm uh, too loud. <laughs> Normally sitting like here, my voice is coming out here, instead my voice is like here. <laughs> I gotta stand up. I'll try to talk quieter. I gotta stand up to push this. I want it to be as good as possible. All right. Let's pull this print and see what happened. Ah, I needed more ink. There wasn't enough ink, but it's still really cool looking. I love this at-home version. Of course, this would, I think I would still be more satisfied with the result off of a printing press because it's just so, the result is so even and everything, but since that's not an option at all, I think this is this is pretty cool and then this is great because this took me like hours of effort to sketch it and then transfer the sketch onto here and then to carve it out and everything so I'm really happy that I was able to use it so yeah my werewolf there's this oh this one is still wet because there was so much ink on it Here's the last one, and then this one. You can see where 
this one had way more ink so there's not as much so like this texture up here is just where there wasn't enough ink here there was enough but I made a big mess down here <laughs> that, that's okay it's all meant to be an experiment maybe I can scan this one maybe I can scan both of these and like put them together because I guess hmm now I'm looking at them this one does it uh, suffers a little bit because the texture I carved into the nose right here a lot of it is lost actually and here those lines I carved in to the shoulder they are lost here you can see every line every line that I carved so maybe actually this is the better option so even though it has this texture here from just not enough ink application applying enough ink for rolling with a rolling pin makes these little fine details go away even in this one some of the fine details are lost because I carved lines right here too and they're all not all gone, but there's a lot of them gone actually. Hmm. Interesting. So I guess if I were to carve a plate for this at home technique and I would carve it from scratch, I would not do any small lines. I would focus on only big, big ones because the big ones aren't getting lost at all. Like here on the nose or here in the moon, like only this tiny little bit of ink got on here. These lines. This most for the most part this outline part. Hmm. Since that other one's still wet, I gotta set this somewhere else. Uh, set it on my keyboard for now. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and clean this plate some. May as well keep streaming and you guys can see what I mean. I'm going to use this cheap drawing paper, but you could use like newsprint or actual, like actual newspaper that's been printed on. The point is to just, it's going to be a piece of paper that you don't really care about. You're going to just toss it. Where'd this go? So much ink. Yep. Well, I have learned. I if I use my finger, it might work better here. Oh, yeah, I'm right next to the camera. I gotta remember. Gotta remember to be careful not to be too loud. Pushing in with my finger will help. I don't know. It's a strange, strange world we live in right now. Experimenting with new art techniques is probably the least worst thing going on right now. So, because actually, this is quite fun. I think this is super fun. Printing. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm in the comfort of home or whatever, but I've, I already enjoyed printmaking, but it's been even more fun doing it at home. <laughs> this is interesting. You can barely make out some of the lines, but this is just to clean. So, Oh, you want out, Kiki? Okay, Kiki. Kiki was napping in the pet bed behind me. She finally got up, stretched, and ran out. I want to at least get enough ink off of here that it's not shiny anymore. I'm sure it will still be able to 
get ink in places where I don't want it if I'm not careful, but at least if it's not shiny, then there's not a really thick bit of ink still waiting around. I'm using my fingers now to try and push it into the grooves. I don't know how well it's working, but it's definitely working on the moon. And I'm pushing on the edges in particular because the ink can get, you know, instead of on this plane, on the side plane. And so I'll make sure to get that if I can. hard Another thing is, make sure you clean this good, just in case they got some ink on it. You don't want to like bake with it, <laughs> without even if it looks clean. Make sure to clean it. Just regular dish soap and hot water should be good enough. Yeah, there's still a lot of wet ink here. Yeah, I don't know if I actually would ever do this technique, this at-home technique, because I just don't like using so much paper just to clean. And it was the same deal in the studio, although you used less paper for cleaning because the printing press is so strong that more ink comes up on each sheet. But the, the jelly plate, or gel plate, technique that I tried last week, that was much better, because cleanup was so easy. In fact, I actually left it for a few days, because it just didn't feel like doing cleanup, and it was fine. <laughs> By the time I was uh, motivated <laughs> enough to clean, it just all came off super easy, super quick, completely. Yeah, after this sheet, whatever is left is left, and I will just make sure to store this. I'm going to wrap it in a big 18 by 24 um, piece of newsprint so that it won't accidentally fall out. Cause I've got some other plates from class before we before we went online only and I've done the same with those just to keep them in case I want to use them for future purposes but also so there's they're, they're uh, not going to get my other stuff dirty by accident Hopefully that is good enough. Huh. 
Haha, <laughs> that's cool. Made this repeat pattern because the paper was slipping. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. There is still a little ink in these lines here, but there's not really anything I can do about that. And this still looks kind of wet, but I've used my finger multiple times, and that's as clean as it's getting. But it's still definitely got clean, because here's the last sheet compared to this one. Alright. Well, I think that's it for this stream. Might stream later today or tomorrow with another project. I've got tons of stuff to work on, so... And, um... I just, since I'm at home all the time now, there's no reason for me not to stream, even if it's just my homework. So thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll see you next time.